All right, everyone, welcome back. So we're heading in towards the end of March, which means it's time for the rookie check-in for the month of March. So a lot of things have happened. There's actually been a lot of rising, a lot of dropping. There's been a lot of that this month. It's been one of those months at the end of the season where, you know, the picks are more or less locked in. It's just the players below them are kind of, you know, either struggling or they're doing really well, which I guess is how it goes with every month. But regardless... Um, for those who have not watched these, we're going to go through 10 rookies in the NHL, the top 10 skaters, and go through the top five goalies in the NHL who are rookies and just see how the season's been. I want to do this every single month, um, of the season. And I have so far, I want to do it next season as well. Cause I think it's cool to keep track of how the rookies develop month by month by month. Uh, so I thought it was a very cool thing to do. So let's get straight into it here with March 2024. You got Connor Bedard, your number one leading scorer for the Chicago Blackhawks. Again, a player that should not surprise anyone. He's number one. He's been number one for the entire check-in this season. Uh, 58 games played, 21 goals, 35 assists, 56 points. He gained 16 points in the month of March. So he has had himself a very good season. I would imagine that... By the time we do our end of the season check-in, because this is the final monthly one, when we do our end of the season check-in, Bedard will be over a point per game, regardless of how many games he's played. Bedard will be close to 70 points, is what I imagine. And that shows that even though he's earning these points kind of silently and over, and, and in my opinion, silently, and over the course of this season, he's doing really well. Like, 70 points for a rookie score is very solid. Um especially for a player like him, which projected to be really good. That's pretty good numbers, and it shows that in the next couple of years, this kid's going to be unbelievable. He really is going to be insane. So I really am enjoying Bedard this year, and I hope that things continue for him in this direction. Number two has not changed either. It's Brock Faber. Faber, 71 games played, 7 goals, 33 assists for 40 points. He gained 6 points in the month of March. So... Another solid season there from Minnesota's favor. Um, definitely a player who, even though his offensive points are good, he's been really good defensively too. He's been incredibly valuable to this Minnesota Wild roster. He was a guy who was acquired in that Kevin Fiala deal. And Minnesota now looks like they won that trade of Kyring, the first round pick in Strammel, and obviously Brock Faber as well. So Minnesota looks awesome in that deal. And Faber's one of those guys who has been really solid this year and is arguably the best defenseman of this rookie class. However, a defenseman who just had a huge month for his team and is playing pretty well has tied him for second in scoring, and that's Luke Hughes. Rising up three spots from last month, he played 73 games, had nine goals, 31 assists for 40 points this season, and as I said, rose up three spots. So, again, Luke Hughes' development was a little bit stalled. I feel like he's had some really slow months in there. He has played a full season. He's not missed any games. But still, you look at him, he's, he kind of slowed down a little bit. Wasn't like what we expected in the middle frame of the season. But in these last couple of months, he's been pretty good. He really has. And this month showed that he can be a really solid defenseman and a great first-pairing defenseman for this Devils team. And now he's tied for second in scoring. Um, prior to that, he was sixth, kind of like an eh player was not, was in the mix, but wasn't going to be a finalist. Now you look at this, he very well could be a finalist. It's very possible. Um, Luke Hughes is a finalist. So we could see a three-way finalist of Bedard, Faber, and Hughes, two defensemen out of three. So that is very interesting to see there. We could see some solid defensemen come out of this rookie class for sure. And Faber and Hughes are the leading guys for that. Minnesota, we go back to Minnesota now for number four. You got Marco Rossi. Rossi has dropped one spot because of Luke Hughes rising. Not because Rossi had a bad month, but because of Luke Hughes rising. 71 games played, 20 goals, 17 assists for 37 points this season. Um, he had four points in the month of um, March. So not a horrible month, but not a great month either. Kind of average for a rookie. Uh, you do want to see more out of Marco Rossi more for sure. Um, but I'm not mad at all. It's his rookie season. And he was a guy, again, who's been through a lot. He's struggled a lot. And at the end of this season, he has pretty good numbers and could could honestly make a case for a Calder finalist. You could take Luke Hughes out of there and put Marco Rossi in. That's very possible. But I do think that with Faber in there, I don't really know they would put two players of the same team. And I think they did that for Raymond and Sider. Um, but I'm not too sure. 
Um, but obviously, two players from the same team can't necessarily win the Calder. So obviously, that plays a factor there too. But regardless, Marco Rossi's had a great season and definitely should get recognized for it. Number five is Logan Cooley. Logan Cooley had a very good month. He had 72 games played, 13 goals, 21 assists, 34 points. He had 7 points in the month of March and rose up 3 spots. So Cooley, as I said, throughout a lot of these rookie check-ins, he's been a player who, even though he's been scoring points, hasn't been like what exactly we expected. We figured he'd have a much better year and be higher in the, in the scoring, but as a lot of rookies tend to do, they kind of struggle out of the gate. And that's not a bad thing, that's not unusual necessarily. What happens to a lot of rookies is that they will come in with high expectations and they will either disappoint or they just won't meet up to those expectations. So, and that's not a bad thing, as I said, because some, t some rookies take longer to get adjusted to the NHL playing system than other rookies do. Like, not every rookie is going to come into the NHL and put up bedard numbers that he's putting up this season. So, obviously, that, that is something that I take into consideration. But Logan Cooley's been good uh, in this last month. And it feels like that with the Coyotes and with Cooley, it's finally starting to show what the player he can really be. So hopefully in his sophomore season, he doesn't face that sophomore slump and has a really good season. But obviously, Logan Cooley there is a number five. Number six is Luke Evangelista. So Evangelista uh, rose up four spots from last month. Uh, so he's actually the highest riser this season um, in, in this rookie check-in. And obviously, too, Nashville didn't even lose a game of regulation in the month of um, March. So that plays a fact, or in the month of March so far. So definitely, with that being said, Evangelis' numbers have been much better. His stats so far, 70 games played, 15 goals, 18 assists, 33 points. He gained 7 points in the month of March. He was 10th in scoring at the end of February. So... Again, with Evangelista, as I mentioned, there are a lot of players who are young in Nashville who look like they're making an impact. Evangelista has been one of the guys, excuse me, that has been up in the system and has been one of them. So I think definitely there, Evangelista deserves plenty of recognition for the way he's played with Nashville this season. I don't see a whole lot of people talking about him because, you know, he's overshadowed by Forsberg having an unreal um, season so far. Yossi's playing well. Saros is playing the top of his game. But Evan Jealous has got some credit too because he's a young player who's going to be on this team for the next couple of years to come and has been great. Uh, number seven, we got Philadelphia here. Tyson Forster. Forster was rose up from the dead, in, essentially, in our rookie check-ins last month. Um, he was not in a single check-in until uh, the month of February. So he's in this one for March as well. And he's risen up two spots. He played 68 games played this season, 19 goals, 13 assists for 32 points. He had six points in the month of March. So obviously great stats there for Forster, a player who, you know, was selected in the mid to late rounds in 2020. Wasn't, I'm not saying that he wasn't expected to be much, but he wasn't expected to be necessarily in this top scoring of rookies. But to be top 10, I'd say is pretty solid for Forster. And he's gotten regular ice time too. He's not like some of these rookies who get limited ice time on the ice. No, Forster's gotten regular shifts, which is impressive there to see, especially from Tortorella and the Flyers. That's something you don't see very often. So yeah, Tyson Forster, number seven, had a very impressive month as well. So with a lot of those players obviously having great seasons, there are players who had bad months. Um, that's usually what happens um, with with rookie check-ins. So you got Dmitry Voronkov dropping four spots at number eight. Voronkov, 66 games played, 17 goals, 14 assists, 31 points. He had one point in the month of March. So yeah, it's been a rough month here for, for, for Voronkov. It's been a rough month altogether for Columbus. So obviously, the fact that he struggled has not really surprised me. I think that's really expected amongst um, Blue Jackets fans, but still, Voronkov has, has had a really good year. He's had a really impressive season. I don't think that should go unnoticed. Um, even though this month's been a little bit of a struggle for him, it does show that he can be a solid player in the NHL, a consistent NHLer, and definitely I think we'll get regularized time next season for sure. But again, players have bad months. It is bad months. It is what it is. And another guy who had a bad month too was Connor Zary. You'd think with Calgary being this team that was pretty solid, but then pretty bad, and then pretty solid, and then pretty bad. You would think that Zary would have a, at least a decent month, 
Not really. 53 games played, 12 goals, 18 assists for 30 points. He dropped four spots from last month. He had one point as well. So, again, another rough month for Zary. Again, as I said, there's a lot of players in the NHL, and there are going to be players who have bad months, and Zary's one of them. But Zary came up into the NHL this season in that month span where he played really well. It's been kind of eh since. But in that month span where he played really well, it demonstrates that he can be a legitimate NHLer. And with guys like Coronado, with guys like Peltier, with guys like Brusevics, with guys like Yermo, guys they brought in from trades, guys they've drafted, and guys that are coming up in the system, this team could have a very bright future ahead, and I'm liking it here for Calgary. And Zary could be that leading player that leads them through into that success. Uh, number 10 is Matthew Nyes. We have not seen Nyes in a while in our rookie check-ins. I don't think we've seen him since the first month. Um, and that's not because Nyes is at a bad season. It's because a lot of players have done a lot better than Nyes has. So this season, he's 69 games played, 12 goals, 17 assists for 29 points. Um, he was not in the top 10 last month, so obviously he didn't rise up at all. But yeah, Matthew Nyes definitely deserves some recognition there. He's had a good season for Toronto. Uh, one of those rookies who, for a good team in the Maple Leafs, don't see a lot of good teams in here. A lot of these teams that I'm looking at here, I mean, there, there are some that are solid, but then again, a lot of these teams are outside of the playoffs. I believe the only team that is in the playoffs is Toronto and Philadelphia. So, nice speaks volume there for how good he's been. And hopefully, in the years to come, he, be, he is a better player um, for the Maple Leafs for sure. So, with Nyes rising up, there's obviously a guy that falls out of it. And it's, it's Adam Fantilli. He fell from 7 to 12 in the rankings, which shouldn't surprise anyone he's injured. So, obviously, when you're injured, you're not scoring any points. And guys below you will. So, obviously... Should not surprise anyone there whatsoever um, that Matthew, that Fantilli fell out of the race. Just really shouldn't. Uh, moving into your goaltenders now uh, for the rookie. You've got Samuel Erson leading the way here. Erson is a 21-14-7 record for a 2.75 and a .895 save percentage. Erson's numbers have gotten worse. They have. And that's that's factored in with the Flyers not being as great as they've been in previous season in previous months too. So obviously that's something you look at. But again, I don't feel like Urson, you know, he got he kind of got thrown into the starter role when Carter Hart got um, you know, terminated by the team because of the allegations. But with Urson, like I feel like he's not meant to be a starter, but he got thrown into it. And I feel like he's playing as well as he can, to be honest. I think the same thing goes for Sandstrom. Um, and I, I mean, we see, we saw today, we saw, we saw Ivan Fedotov get caught up and he's going to North America to play for the Flyers. And additionally, Kolsalov is coming over or Kolosov, not Kolsalov. sounds like the Kolsalov, uh, the e Easter, but, um, Kolosov is coming over as well. So two solid Russian goalies are coming over, uh, to hopefully replace those players. Maybe not this season, but eventually. And Urson's a guy that I think is going to, you know, be a probably a backup, but I don't see him as a starting goalie, a full starting goalie. And he's played, since the All-Star game, he's probably played the majority of the games. He's probably played 98% of the Flyers games with Peterson and Sandstrom taking a few games in there. But again, when you see players like Sandstrom and Peterson, they come in, they don't play well. I mean, what are your options? Like, you, you only have Urson. That's pretty much all they can roll with. So that's unfortunate there. But Urson, he's doing as well as he can. Number two, uh, Pai Turkachekov. Has had good stats as well. 19, 13, and 4, a 2.45 and a 0.908 save percentage. Um, I've talked about Kachekov in other videos with the Carolina Hurricanes. I think that in playoffs, Kachekov could be their guy. Anderson could be their guy. Or they could just rotate. Who the hell knows, honestly, with the Carolina goalies. But nonetheless, Kachekov has proven before in the playoffs that he can be a legitimate goalie. Um, not a lot of goalies on this list can say that. And I know that Kachekov's played in the last like two playoffs, but still he is a notable guy who definitely can make a dent in the playoffs for sure. And Carolina with those rotating goalies, they could be a hard out in the playoffs and Kachekov could lead that, that push. So definitely impressed there. Uh, number three is Joel Hofer of the St. Louis Blues. Again, nothing changes here. Um, the goalie rankings are essentially the same. There's not a whole lot of changes. Um, but Hofer, 13-11-0, a 2.73 and a .911. In the games he's played, he's looked good. Um, I mean, there have been a few games where you're like, eh, he hasn't been that great. But again, he's a rookie goalie. So rookie goalies obviously tend to not be like that great. But with Bennington having a solid year and Hofer playing not terrible either, it goes to show that St. Louis might have a really solid goalie tandem here uh, for the future. So yeah, I like Hofer there for St. Louis. He's number three. 
doing pretty well. Number four, Lucas Dostal. So he rises up. He has not been in a check-in. Um, but Dostal, 11, 19, and 1, a 2.96 and a 0.908 save percentage. Again, as I said, Dostal was not in the check-in last month. So he's rising up here from, not the dead, but from the lower rankings. And he looks like he could be ready for Anaheim. When Anaheim is a contending team, he could be the player that leads them to the promised land. He really could be. He could be the goalie that backs backbones them. Because I feel like with John Gibson, um, by the time the Ducks are a contender, I feel like Gibson's gonna be out of his prime. Just when you look at just when you look at the facts, it, it, it's probably gonna be how it is. But you know, Dostal could be that rookie goalie when they're ready. We'll see. Um, and finally, number five, I have Joseph Wall. Joseph Wall, 10, 9, and 1, a 2.96 and a 0.908 C percentage. Wall's had a good year, um, dealt with injuries a lot too, but considering the fact that he dealt with injuries and he's still fifth in rookie goalies is impressive. Uh, so obviously with Dostal rising up into our rankings, a guy has to go down and that's Devin Levi. Levi went from four to six in the rankings. Levi's had some solid games in there, but still. Um, there's still a lot of factors that Levi has not been the goalie that's lived with the expectations for the Sabres this year. And when I do my Sabres video, if they get eliminated, not when, if they get eliminated, because it's very possible they do, they make the playoffs, but if they get eliminated, I will talk about Levi and how he's been disappointing. But then again, was he really, does that really surprise you? It really doesn't surprise me. But yeah, that is your rookie check-in for the 2024 March. Um, I don't know why I said that March of 2024. Sorry. I need to go to bed. It's been a long day. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoy, make sure like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. But regardless, uh, we will do one more of these. It's like our end of the season check-in, and then we will be done with this. And, and then we'll look at, you know, who's exactly going to win the Calder and all the other awards. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.